Now here I have two of the latest and greatest action cameras. We have the new GoPro Hero 11 and the Insta360. This is the new X3. Now for those that might not be familiar with these action cameras, this is the GoPro, which is a standard action camera, has the single lens here up front, and the Insta360 X3 is a dual half inch sensor camera that does shoot 360 video. With the release of the new X3, we're starting to see new features on here. They're slowly closing the gap between these two types of cameras. Now one thing to note, Insta360 is sponsoring this video by providing me these cameras to compare. But note, just like all my other videos, everything I talk about is based on my experiences using these, whether it's good or bad, the pros and cons. So let's dive right into the comparisons and you do wanna stick around because there is that one new feature on here which has really expedited my editing process. And that's that one thing I keep thinking, we're starting to bridge the gap between these two. And of course, the first thing we always wanna know is what is the price of these two cameras? The Insta360 X3 comes in at $449. $499 is what you're more than likely gonna pay for the GoPro. Like I said, there's multiple packages out there that are very confusing and I've talked about it in my previous videos, but we'll just stick around that $499 to $549 price because that's what a majority of people are more likely gonna pay when you go retail and just buy it either on Amazon or at Best Buy. However, there are some other subscription model deals you can actually get through GoPro and I'll leave that information down below. Either way, links will be down below for these cameras in the video description. Now size and weight, of course you can see here with the size, the X3 is a lot taller, uh, but it is skinnier, but we do have the dual lenses here versus the single lens on the GoPro. Now, as far as weight goes, the GoPro comes in 155 grams, while the X3 comes in 179 grams. As far as the video resolution on the X3, we have 5.7K at 30 frames a second. However, that is shooting in 360. So while it is 5.7, that's 5.7 with both cameras. But when you are exporting out, if you're shooting in 360 and exporting it back out, you're still exporting out at that 1080p. However, one upgrade that Insta360 did do on this version of the X3 is that now when you're using single lens mode, which is basically you're using one or the other lenses, when you're shooting in just one direction, the same way you would be doing with a GoPro, you now have 4K resolution in single lens mode, which is a really, really big deal because now you have 4K coming out of one of the lenses and you have this new touchscreen, this large 2.29 inch touchscreen, which we never had in the past. We had a smaller one that honestly I hardly ever used because it was so small. Now we have this huge vibrant touchscreen that you can use compared to the GoPro. We only have the touchscreen on the back, but if you're doing something like vlogs, now you can actually shoot in 4K and you can see yourself in a large 2.29 inch touchscreen on the very front. Touchscreen here, there is no touchscreen on the GoPro as far as the front touch screen goes. Now with the new screen, I'm definitely finding myself using single lens mode a lot more, which is also now in 4K, using it a lot more because I am able to utilize that front screen. Now when it comes to field of view, of course, when you're in 360, you have 360 field of view. That's something that the GoPro Hero 11 doesn't. But even in single lens mode right now, we have 170 degree field of view coming out of one of the lenses. Here on the GoPro, depending on which stabilization mode you're in, you have anywhere between one 140 to 150, 155 field of view, depending on, like I said, on which stabilization mode. Every time you change or up the stabilization, it does punch in that field of view a little bit more. Now, the one thing new on the GoPro Hero 11 that they did introduce is this new sensor, which gives you an eight by seven format, almost a square format for you to shoot in. Now that definitely helps you in post-processing if you want to change your orientation, if you wanted to shoot one shot, which is an eight by seven, and then you can also export that out as a horizontal shot or a vertical shot. Like I said, it's almost a square format, and if you're shooting at 5.3 and you're exporting out in 4K, it does give you that extra video resolution to punch in. So if you wanted to export in vertical or horizontal, you're able to do that with that new sensor. Now when it comes to image stabilization on these, both of these superior image stabilization, all these new action cameras, the GoPro has what they call hyper smooth and Insta360 has what they call flow state stabilization, which is this little toggle that you're able to turn on and off in studio app. And what's great about both these cameras too, you do have the ability to have those horizon locks. The one thing different though on the X3 is that horizon lock can be in any direction. So if you are spinning the camera 
camera around and you want it back, pointed back this way in horizon lock, you could do that with the GoPro. You are only doing horizon lock, like I said, with that single lens, single camera, so that one angle you can do horizon lock with. Now, as far as durability goes, this of course will go to the GoPro because of the lens. This will always probably be the downfall of something like a 360 camera because you have those exposed lenses here. So when we talk about action, action sports, mounting this thing, while you can easily do it with the X3 and these 360 cameras, you just have to make sure that it's in a place that if you know it's gonna fall or it might fall, you highly risk scratching the lenses on these types of cameras. So when it comes to action sports or usage where you risk dropping the camera, which I guess you could risk dropping the camera no matter what, but you have a better chance of survival with the GoPro versus the X3. Because Insta360 does have what they call invisible selfie stick, which is when you are shooting in 360 and the camera's mounted just like that on a stick, the way it edits the two cameras together it actually removes the stick from your video, which means my kids can hold this out just like that at any direction and not have to worry about framing and not have to also worry about seeing the stick in their shots. Also, when you're mounting this to your car or mounting it to a bike, you can get those drone-like shots where it looks like the camera is just out there floating because you don't see the stick in the shot, but yet you're getting this unique angle whichever way you're mounting this on your subject. And that's the difference here with the GoPro is that if you are doing anything like selfie and you're wide enough, you will end up seeing that selfie stick in the shot. Or if you're out there shooting it with my kids and if I hand this over to my kids, definitely you have to really position the camera perfectly in order for them to be in the shot. Now this brings me to that one feature I talked about in the very beginning where I said it started to change how I shot and there's a feature on here called me mode. The one thing with 360 in the past is that you would always have that extra step of editing the 360 video which takes more time. The one thing with me mode now is that when you put this camera into me mode you're basically shooting with both cameras but it's only shooting towards you or towards the subject. And what it's doing is actually compiling those two camera shots into one video Everything you shoot in me mode now is if I hold it like this, now the camera is automatically going to be shooting back here and capturing everything, compiling that into a single video. Now as far as weather and waterproofing on these two cameras, they're both rated for 33 feet waterproof. Now I haven't tested it that, that deep, uh, but they are rated for it uh, without having any case on it. So as they are out of the box, rated for 33 feet. Now when it comes to out of camera video quality, I will give that to GoPro. The GoPro video quality is really, really good. And like I said, if you are shooting in 360 and exporting out, you are still exporting out those specific frames that you're repositioning the camera, you're still exporting those out at 1080p, where here your export is gonna be at minimum, you know, 4K, 5.3K, or I mean, you can always go down, but you're always gonna wanna probably shoot at the higher resolutions, but you are gonna get that higher quality, higher resolution out of the GoPro if you are comparing these when you're talking about shooting in 360. When it comes to photos, we do have 27 megapixels on the GoPro Hero 11. We have 72 megapixels on the Insta360 X3, and we are able to achieve that 72 because we are shooting with the two lenses. You're shooting in 360. So with that, you are able to get and achieve higher resolution. And being 360, it gives you that ability or option to then reposition what frame you want out of it later. Speaking of reframing, this is where the X3 is extremely powerful because you do not focus on the subject anymore when you're out there shooting as much. And what I mean by that is that when you're out there shooting, all you have to do is really hit record and have the camera pointed out and away from you. And you know that you're shooting everything, which means later in post-processing, you can reposition that camera in any angle. And not only reposition the camera angle, you can also export out unlimited types of clips from one single clip. That's one of the biggest benefits with 360 and that's something you can't do, of course, with a standard action camera that only has one lens. Whichever way you're pointing it, that's all it's shooting and that's the only thing you have to work with in post-processing. Now, with that said, is there gonna be one camera that you must have as far as if you're gonna go grab and go? Very, very hard to say because there's definitely huge benefits on both sides. Now, lucky enough, I do have that option to pick up both cameras and I still feel like these things sit in very similar. 
yet different categories. You kind of have the best of both worlds with the Insta360. You have 4K now shooting from a single lens. Then you have the ability to shoot 360. The one thing about 360 and the X3 and actually all 360 cameras in general is that you're just always worried about the lens. Where here, you throw this around, you throw it on the ground, you throw it on the table, you beat it up, you throw it in your pocket, you almost never worry about these types of cameras. And like I talked about, one of the things that's helping Insta360 in this case, as far as editing goes, that me mode, it takes away that step of post-processing, which I talk about a lot, which pushes people away, I think, from 360 knowing they have to go into another app, go into another uh, environment to then do some exports. That me mode really expedites your editing process if you know that you're gonna get this specific shot. If I know I just wanna shoot a selfie of myself, or if I just wanna hook it up to a bike and just get the bike, or just get one action that I'm doing, throw it into me mode, hit record, and know that I'm gonna have a single file ready to go. Once again, huge thanks to Intel 360 for sponsoring these cameras. Of course, if you guys are interested in either one of these, links will be down below in the video description. As always, if you guys got some value from this video, a big like would be much appreciated. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos. This is Ultra Astasio with flightpath.com. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.